Hi, I'm Ray Hartley from the Brentest Foundation, and I just want to take you through some of our thinking about the forthcoming general election. So we did a survey in November, October, November of 2022, and we did another one in October of 2023. So this survey had very interesting results, and, and comparing the two surveys, we were able to draw some interesting conclusions. So the October 23 survey results showed the ANC was down from 2022 from 48 to 41 percent. And a new phenomenon on the scene, the multi-party coalition, which is the aggregation of the votes of a number of opposition parties from the DA through the uh, Action SA IFP and so on, um, were marginally up. The major beneficiary appears to have been the EFF, I mean, the major beneficiary of the ANC's decline. And this could be the departure of the RET faction from the ANC, showing itself up now in the EFF result. And the IFP, although still smaller, made very significant gains. And considering that these gains are mostly made in one province, Pazilin Natal, it's definitely something to look at. So if we look at the trends, it's clear that the ANC does face some decline. So what I've got here is the election results from national elections in red and local government elections in blue over the years. And at the end, I've got our prediction for the national election of 2024. So from this, you can see two distinct trend lines there. There was a, a, an uptick in ANC support uh, right up until the mid-2000s, and then there was a steady uh, decline in both national and local governments. What's quite interesting is that the local government results always lower than the national results. And, you know, a reasonable predictor of the national result would be to add between 2 and 6% to the previous local government election results. So if I look at our prediction at 41%, um, if you were to, to do that, you would get to around about the 45, 46% mark. If we look at the provinces quickly, in Gauteng, we see that the ANC and the MPC parties are going to be more or less at parity, and it's quite likely that the EFF will emerge as the kingmaker here. In KwaZulu-Natal, the ANC has declined quite sharply. This is related to the departure of Jacob Zuma from the hierarchy, and maybe even from the party, um, because he's now supporting it a new party, the MK party, and has pledged not to vote for the ANC. So that has hit the ANC quite hard. And because it's a populous province, it hits the national result quite hard. It looks like there is a fairly strong possibility of an opposition coalition ruling KwaZulu-Natal. If we look at the Western Cape, we see the DA is steadily ahead there at 56%. Uh, it's not a massive majority, but it's been pretty predictable over the years that they would uh, either maintain or grow their position there. It will be interesting, however, to see what happens this election. There are some parties which have not been tested in a national election, which are competing with the DA in some of the Western Cape hinterland, and how big an in impact that will have, we'll have to see. Big issues for voters. I think we could all, you know, uh, come up with these without the help of a survey. Uh, interesting that unemployment remains the number one issue for voters uh, at 30 percent, and corruption, load shedding at 19 percent. And I think bearing in mind that this survey was done in October of 2023, after a pretty solid year of load shedding. Um, it comes in as quite a big factor. And then crime and weak leadership not far behind that. 
The interesting thing here is that load shedding is the most variable of these factors. So it's unlikely, for example, that you could solve unemployment or corruption or crime um, over the next several months before the election. But load shedding has been shown to be manageable. Uh, for example, when BRICS was in town, there was no load shedding. Um, and the ANC could be looking for ways to keep the lights on or relatively on in the months leading up to an election. And that could have positive impact for them. Yeah, I think experience of government is worsening. You'll see that the positive rating is slightly up, but the negative rating is up much higher. Um, that's going to play into this election. And then it leads to the question of how are voters going to make up their minds. We've seen quite a marked shift away from party loyalty and from the old issues drumming on about the apartheid being to blame and, and so on. And a big shift towards actually saying it's the ANC of the last 30 years that's to blame for the, the present problems in the country. Will governance be an issue in the election? It's interesting that more and more South Africans are saying that the Western Cape is the best governed province. And uh, it's quite interesting to see also in our latest survey, you see Gauteng improving. That shows that Panyazal is Sufi's premiership has made a difference. So will this play out in the way people vote is the, is, is the big question. If you ask people which party they think is best at governing, um, pretty close neck and neck ANC and DA, which is quite interesting because that's not at all what the national election result outcome is predicted to be. So there are people in the ANC that acknowledge that it is not the best at governing. And the DA does get people who are not in its ranks who acknowledge that it is the best at governing, which is an interesting result. The EFF coming in there, considering that they're not really governing anywhere uh, substantial, is quite interesting as well. So what does it all mean? We are moving away from a dominant party situation to a coalition government. So if we look at this graph, it shows party support since 1994. And you'll see that the ANC has entered into a slight decline, perhaps accelerating decline, and that the opposition share of the vote is growing. So there is this view now that that ANC portion is very likely to slip below 50, leading to a coalition government. Interestingly, we asked if people would be happy to see a coalition government, and some 70, uh, uh, more than 70% said yes. And this is despite the uh, poor performance of some of the coalition governments at municipal level. So we did a scenario exercise, and you can see there's a cover of a book up there in the top right-hand corner, which is now available at exclusives and other places, which actually goes in some detail about the scenarios for South Africa. So in our view, the good scenario is on the more effective government and strong economy quadrant. We see that as being an uh, environment where there's reform and dealing with some of the mismanagement and bringing back some of the technocratic competence and sorting out the state-owned enterprises, dealing with corruption and so on. And the political enablers for that scenario we think would be some kind of multi-party coalition government um, uh, we, with the ANC or excluding the ANC, uh, the ANC most likely aligning with centrist parties would be one of those scenarios. The bad scenario in our view uh, is the road to populism, the implementation of these policies of nationalizing things, getting rid of the independence of the Reserve Bank and so on. And that scenario the political enablers for that would be the ANC support dropping into the low 40s, and maybe they would then look to the EFF as a coalition partner, uh, because it would be simpler to have one coalition partner, and because there might be a big uh, 
uh, revolt within the ANC against the present leadership, saying that they are not uh, succeeding at, 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 at shoring up the votes. The ugly scenario, I'm afraid, is we just meander on the way we are now with poor governance and delivery failures and things just progressively get worse. So then a narrow ANC victory, in other words, the electorate doesn't punish the ANC enough for its uh, bad governance record over the last uh, uh, several, well, over the last decade or so. Um, and it gets away with it and it carries on basically with this slow decline. And then related to that is a fistful of sense scenarios, also with an ANC narrow victory, but recognizing that the writing's on the wall and there's just massive escalation of rent extraction because people see that they won't have their, their hands on the levers of power for much longer. So one thing is certain, uh, we're heading either in this election or the next election into some sort of messy coalition future. So if we look at our, our latest survey, this is more or less how it balances out. The little triangle there in the middle is the 50% mark. So the ANC is, remains dominant, but it's going to look for a coalition partner. The possibility of a non-ANC coalition involving the DA, EFF, ASA, etc. is there because they would have a majority, but unlikely. Many of these parties have pledged not to work with each other already. So in the good scenario, you would see a coming together of the centre, um, the ANC looking to bring some fresh uh, partners into government to uh, give some momentum to reforms, and those parties could range all the way across the centre there, depending on how large the ANC's uh, requirement is for coalition partners. There's also the scenario where it just needs, it just falls slightly below 50 and just needs one party and might look to the IFP, for example. Then we have the bad scenario, pretty straightforward. The ANC and the EFF share a history. There's a lobby within the ANC which enjoys the support of the Deputy President, Paul Machatile, and others. And they win the day, and we have this populist coalition. And then we have the ugly, that's the ANC coming in just above 50 and continuing to go on its own. And we just carry on meandering slowly towards decline and ultimately collapse. Just full of sense, we've talked about a similar scenario, but a much more rapacious view is taken. And we have um, enrichment really going uh, uh, full scale. Are we heading for coalition chaos? Interesting question. I think we've got to remember that after the last local government election, there are more than 70 coalitions in the country. There is dysfunction in the metros, but there are a lot of functional local government administrations out there that are coalitions. Um, I also believe parties have a three-tier deployment system. So the A team goes to national government, the B team goes to the provinces, and others go to local government. There are, of course, notable exceptions to this, and some parties have very strong local councillors and mayors that they've appointed. But in general, the calibre of people serving in the local government representative bodies is not as high as in provincial and national government. I think increasing political competition has caused parties to become more hostile at local level because the stakes are higher at national level. And it's a good way to signal your hostility to, uh, to another party. And that has undermined coalitions. I do think local governments have made more political appointments to technocratic positions. It's been pretty bad at national and provincial level, but especially so at local government. This means that when a coalition comes in, it's quite hard to demonstrate change because you have to overhaul the entire administration, and that's not easy to do. On the upside, I think coalitions inherently involve greater transparency because you have other parties other than the ruling party sitting in on executive meetings where big decisions are made and they're able to speak out or expose what they believe are 
bad decisions or corrupt decisions. Um, and I think coalitions are probably still better than one party dominance, which has really been bad for local government and provincial government and national government. And you get corruption and cater deployment and things like that entrenching themselves. We have one party dominance. So that's pretty much it. Uh, thank you very much for listening in to this. And uh, there's the, again is the cover of our book. Look out for it. It's at exclusives. And I hope you have a good election. <laughs>